For the longest time it's been said Judgment Day doesn't have a leader, but it's all been a lie. What if they've been under your nose the whole time? What if it's someone you know? Well everything's going to be revealed once we execute our plan to take over. And the first thing on our list is to add to our ranks. And we have two prospects who both want in. They want to change the trajectory of their career, but there's only room for one. Six is our max, so they are going to have to earn their spot right now. It's the roar after money in the bank, and it's Ziggler versus JD McDonough. Two men who have come to blows in the past, but this is about more than that. This could be a huge career boost for both to be part of the plans to take over WWE. And it shows. They take it all the way up to each other. It's so even. But then the lights go out. And when they come back on, Rhea is at the top of the ramp. But something is off. Something shifted. Not only in Rhea, but in JD. And he's just staring a hole through Ziggler. And Ziggler tries to hit him with a strike. But he just stands there. He tries again. Nothing. And then JD snaps. He throws Ziggler to the outside and he slams his head off the stairs repeatedly. He bloodies up Ziggler. He's out. JD McDonough throws him in the ring, pins him, and he is the newest member of Judgment Day. He went to another gear and Rhea is impressed and she says, the lead is very happy with you. So we'll see you for the induction. Congratulations. The leader is impressed. But is Rhea speaking for herself or is there someone else? Well, we get a little more info during the induction. And Rhea is once again front and center and she makes it very clear that only excellence is accepted in the judgment day. Just look at how far Dom Dom pushed Cody at Money in the Bank. Damien pushing for world titles. Finn doing the same. So we officially induct you, but the bar is high. And as a show of our loyalty, I'm going to tell you who the true leader of Judgment Day is. JD is extremely excited by what Rhea just whispered to him. But what did she say? Who is it? And while we don't find out just yet, we do find out what the next phase of the plan is. And it's a big one. But before we hear the next phase, it's time to talk about Raid Shadow Legends. That's right. Your boy has made it. So thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And because I'm new, I wanted to share the top three things I like about being a new player. And first is how easy it is to jump in and get going. I just chose this big fella Gaelic because he kind of looks like Seamus. He swings an axe and he literally melts people. So what's not to like? But the next part is how easy the UI is to use. It's pretty dawning when you start a new game from scratch, but they make it super easy for me to get around because they literally just tell me what to do. They had me upgrading stuff and they had me understanding why I was upgrading stuff, but the best part about being a new player is discovering all the new characters like old mate Gaelic. He's one of over 7,000 characters you can snap up and dominate with, but Raid don't even stop there. They have a new animated series called Raid Call of the Arbiter, and to celebrate this, they're going to give you the chance to get one of the characters Artak for free. All you have to do is log into the game for seven days between now and July 24th, and he's yours for nothing. And if you think you don't need him, you should see him in action in Call of the Arbiter because he dominates. So use my link in the description or the QR code on the screen, and you can get this epic champion Knight Errant and all kinds of other useful stuff. But once you're in the game crushing everybody, make sure you come and find me under the name MurfsYT13 and tag up with me in a clan. So just hit the link in the description or scan the code to get started. Rhea dominates another match. She gets the big win. And when she gets backstage, she reveals what the first phase is. I'm going to start by defending my championship with ease over that Joker Zoe Stark at SummerSlam. But the real news is this. The leader's orders are that we procure the tag team championships. And the team handpicked to do it is the master and the apprentice. Finn, the very man he trained from the ground up, JD. So Kevin, Sammy, we officially challenge you for a match at SummerSlam. All right, all right, all right. You, you guys already know why we're here, right? We heard what she said, and right away, I just want to...
How many times do I have to say, I don't want to be interrupted? What the hell do you want, Dominic? I was out here to accept your stupid little challenge, you idiot. And now, I'm looking at your face, and I don't want to be looking at your face, but I am looking at your face, and I want to punch your face! Kev, Kev, relax. Blood pressure, please, come on. Calm down. No! I'm sick of it! All I wanted to do was come out here, accept the challenge, go to SummerSlam, beat him, and move on. And now, I have to look at his stupid ass face! Kev, just for... I said, Kev, you better start showing me and Judgment Day respect. You don't want to cross us right now. It won't make the leader very happy. Fine. The lights come back on. Zane is down. Owens is down. And now, just on the outside of the ring, it's Rhea Ripley with Dominic standing behind her. Was it her? Under the cover of darkness? And then, up on the ramp, it's JD and Finn, the Master and the Apprentice. They are going to be going toe to toe with the premier tag team in the WWE at the biggest party this summer. The whole event has an uneasy feel after what we just saw. Rhea is ruthless in her defense after yet another lights out moment which caused her to go to another gear against Stark. There's definitely something in the air. And when the lights go out, they seem to take on another form. And it carries all the way through to JD and Finn who work seamlessly together in their match. But Owens and Sammy have all the answers. That is until Owens loses his cool again because here comes Damian Priest. And Owen snaps. He's so sick of being interrupted, he goes after him. But before Owens can even get there, it's Finn Balor who's in his face. And he tells Damien to leave. He says he doesn't need any help. And there is a moment of real tension. Priest, though, backs away and leaves him to it. But this lapse in concentration gives Owens the chance to hit a stunner on Balor. And now they have JD in the ring two on one. Owens hits a stunner on him now, and Sammy is the legal man, and he can line him up. The lights come back on, and now JD is out of the ring, and Rhea is standing there again. But this time, Sammy and Kevin aren't down, but they are confused. But the confusion gives Bella the chance. He runs in, he hits a sling blade on Owens, and then he tackles him over the top rope into the outside. And Rhea has Zane distracted. And then JD takes his chance. He drops Zane, and Balor is back now on the apron, tags in, nails a coup de grace, and Judgment Day win it. The Master and the Apprentice get it done, and new tag team champions are crowned. All with the help of the new leader. But this is only part of the plan. And with the celebration well underway on the next episode of Raw, we find out what the next phase of it is. Rhea again, taking the lead, says, Ah, uh, listen to you all, boo. It's so cute, and it's so funny because Judgment Day isn't even here yet. But it is coming. We've only just begun. I'm the women's champion. Finn and JD are tag team champions, and now it's time to initiate the next phase. So Gunther, Damien, would like to speak with you. And interestingly, this seems to rub Finn the wrong way. Even after the success of SummerSlam, it seems as though the tension between the two is still there. But before this gets a chance to escalate and get interrupted. All right, I think we've heard enough of this. Rhea, I'm just gonna say it straight up. I think you're the leader and all of this is a waste of time, so I'm getting right to it. I wanna fight you. I want to beat you, and I want to cut the head of this hideous snake you call Judgment Day. Bex, that's actually perfect. I was hoping someone would have the guts to come out here, because, well, quite frankly, before you rudely interrupted us, I was about to make a big announcement. You see, WWE have honored us. Because we've been so dominant, they've given us our own event. And Judgment Day is upon all of you. So I accept, and I'll see you there. And you will see the leader in the flesh.
What an ominous warning from Rhea Ripley. But it wasn't the only challenge she threw out, and Imperium wastes no time in answering as we see Damien Priest walking alone backstage, getting jumped by Kaiser and Vinci later in the night. And with no Finn Balor or JD around to help, Gunther confronts him and says, Cowards, doing all your dirty work under the cover of darkness. The mat is sacred. That is where I choose to do my business. So I will see you at Judgment Day. That was odd, and Gunther knows it. He rallies up the troops after seeing Rhea in the distance, and they get out of there. Imperium take their leave, but before Rhea can, she's approached by Kayla and asks point blank. Rhea, the whole WWE Universe is wondering, are you the true leader of Judgment Day? First of all, no congratulations for our success? Typical. And secondly, maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. All will be revealed at our own event. And there was no congratulations for that either, so I don't even know why I'm talking to you. Get out of my face. And with the big moment drawing near, Judgment Day is truly upon the WWE but they aren't going to be able to waltz into the event easily because the former tag team champions want another shot. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to get it. They go right after JD and Finn in the middle of their match on Raw and they blow it apart. And Owens is screaming, turn the lights off now boys, huh? Come on, where are the spooky little games now? Yeah, there it is, there it is, come on out. The lights don't go out, but Damian Priest does come out and he clears out Owens and Zayn. But they're smart. They know that their time is coming and they let them have the outnumber. But the tension grows even more in the ring when Balor notices that again, Priest has gotten involved. And he says, first of all, Owens, Zayn, we'll kick your ass at Judgment Day for these tag team titles. But Damien, how many times do I have to say it? Stay out of my business. But Priest says, you show me that disrespect one more time, and no leader on Earth will be able to save you. Priest walks off, but as he does, he gets attacked by his opponent at Judgment Day, Gunther! And now they're into it on the ramp! And now, Owens and Zayn, they get back in the ring, and it's on in there as well! We then see Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch burst out from backstage! The final phase might be moments away, but the plan is not going to be executed without some heavy resistance. and it comes right from the start of the show. Owens and Zayn fight with everything they have to try and regain their tag team championships. And at the strict order of Finn Balor, no member of Judgment Day, especially Damian Priest, is to get involved. But they don't need any. JD and Finn complete an incredibly impressive feat. They knock off Owens and Zayn with no help. No lights out, clean. It's a huge start for Judgment Day's Night of Nights. But the plan isn't fully executed yet. It's time for the next phase, and that's even more gold in the form of the Intercontinental Championship. And of course, Gunther is backed by Imperium, but Priest is alone. But even with the odds stacked against him, Damien fights like you know he will. They absolutely destroy each other. They take each other to task, and as you can imagine, the physicality is next level. But also, as you can imagine, Imperium start meddling with the match. Priest is desperately outnumbered, and the plan is in jeopardy. Dominic runs out. He wants to help, but he's easily dispatched by Imperium. He's no match for Vinci and Kaiser. All while backstage, JD and Finn do nothing. They just watch on. Finn has made JD stay by his side, but Rhea then storms in and says, you guys are gonna have to help him. Finn, help him. Leaders, orders. Finn clearly doesn't want to. He's annoyed, but he goes out there with JD. They brawl Imperium all over ringside. They finally take care of the threat. Gunther looks for Priest, but he misses and catches the referee. JD keeps Kaiser and Vinci at bay, while Finn 
hits the ring. Bella chooses to help. He goes to the top. He nails a coup de grace on Gunther. He looks at Priest and says, for the leader. And then he and JD dip out. It's all there for Damien now. He picks up Gunther, nails a south of heaven, and he gets the massive win. He breaks Gunther's winning streak, and Judgment Day now hold all the gold on Raw. This is historic. This is incredible. But this isn't over. We are about to find out who the true leader of Judgment Day is. And if you thought the previous match was physical, it is fully rivaled by this one. Becky brings the heat. This is when things start to get crazy. The lights start to flicker. The feed starts to get interrupted. And Ripley seems to embrace it. She seems to grow even stronger. And the panic starts to set in for Lynch. She's starting to realize that she isn't in control at all. She's starting to realize that this was all part of the plan. And it's time for the final phase. When the lights come back on, Rhea Ripley is just laughing. There's no one else there. And Becky says, I knew it. I knew it was you all along. And Becky runs at her, but Ripley catches her and drops her with a riptide. Rhea Ripley pins Becky Lynch and wins. Was this what she meant by the leader being under everyone's nose the whole time. Rhea Ripley is the one. Then she looks into the camera and says, One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> We chose to walk with the Reapers and not burn with the Saints. You now bear witness to the Wyatt Six. Welcome to your demise. Welcome to Judgment Day. <laughs>